news courtesy of Mixmag regarding a new club opening up in London, which is very, very, very interesting, especially for me, um, considering that I'm an absolute addict of the nightlife and I'm an absolute addict of clubs and addict of techno, addict of dance music in general. And I'd love to see these new spaces popping up all over London because I still think at the moment, even though we have some of the best clubs in London, and I think overall in terms of diversity of musical genres and different sort of club nights and promotions circuits and you know people behind the scenes even though i think we have some of the best things here i still feel like there's things missing that sh could be done better that would make that would help make london the premier premier destination for clubbing i feel like anyway it continues the team behind Print Works, Depot Mayfield and Tobacco Docks, Broadwick Live and LWE have joined forces for a new space, The Beams, a coming experience which will open up in October. Obviously, The Beams, I'm assuming, because it's got beams all over it. Makes sense. Situated in a warehouse that is once part of the Tate and Lauk factory, it, The Beams will span across 55,000 square feet of space. Oh, Tate and Lauk, that's next to um, Canning Town, isn't it? Or like City Airport. It is. Oh, wow. That's near where I grew up. The club will be located in a bustling East London close to London City Airport, providing an industrial space for revelers to let loose and enjoy music. I really hope, again, this is, why I, this is what didn't really happen with Fold, but you know, maybe Fold's my own issue for not getting involved in the first place. Ooh, double entendre there. But I really do hope that these sort of clubs go out their way to make some sort of program or initiative where they include local artists and DJs because I've literally grown up around this area. I've been into this music for the most of my life and to be able to play here will be an absolute privilege and absolute honour, but it'll absolutely tie in with everything that's around it, right? And I'm sure there's other DJs and people that live around the area too that I have no idea even exists because I've not, I, I don't necessarily hang around there too much anymore. But it would be cool to kind of have that tie-in where you have this place that's situated in this really interesting part of East London with loads of history dating back to the First World War. And then you tie it in with people who actually live in and around this area, who have ties around the area too, who get to kind of play there. And, you know, it's a kind of it's a cool, interesting marketing story. Instead of just going to pick and book people like Amelia Lenz and Carl Coxer could play. It's just boring. But they don't do that because I guess you know, maybe it doesn't garner the same level of attention in terms of ticket sales and whatnot going forward. But I really would like it if they did that. They have some sort of thing, some sort of outreach program, maybe some sort of de designated club night or something that they do. Maybe one one thing, maybe a residency program if they wanted to do so, where they try to promote and uplift and platform local DJs and artists like myself. Because I really do think that's what's missing with these sort of places because it feels like they just get plopped there. You have all these external hipsters coming in from all over the place for people from outside of east london but then you have nothing that's actually tied to the area that's that's local nothing everything's kind of people from all far from places and i hate that it pisses me off a little bit i gotta be honest um it continues anyway um the beams will operate using a hybrid multi-use complex just as other venues developed by broadwick live it will offer a customizable space during the week contemporary industrial uses such as construction film and art photo shoots corporate and brand events exhibitions and fashion shows that's the only sad thing about clubs in london isn't it and about just the the business of setting up a nightclub it's so expensive i must i would imagine to run a nightclub to pay the rent operating costs whatever it may be that if you have a space such as the beams you kind of owe it to yourself and your bank balance and the future of your kids and the ability to pay your mortgage and the fact that you don't want to get divorced from your partner you kind of owe it yourself to try to make use of the space during the week by hiring it out to film companies production companies blah 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 blah, blah to film adverts and what not what not just to kind of help you to keep the back the books balanced because you can't rely on just making money purely on being a nightclub now you could say the same thing about bergheim because they had this massive exhibition there during lockdown they have, you know, <coughs> live music type shows during the week. They sometimes let people to film stuff indoors. There's, so I'm sure they hire it out. But for the most part, you could say 70% of Berkheim's income or those sort of kind of clubs, right? These sort of mega clubs mostly comes down from what they program on a week to week basis. It's not because of, you know, anything else. Um, and it would be nice if we had stuff, to, we had the same thing in terms of clubs in the UK. Because I feel like if that was, if that happened, I feel like the lineups would also reflect it. I feel like if you had a club that would, could survive on just having really solid club nights alone, you would see far more interesting and diverse lineups on the, on, on, at the clubs. But because they can't, 
that's why you see the same old regurgitated names again and again because those are the ones that sell tickets when the space is being used for climb nights and weekend organizers are keen to make it a music and cultural space Broadwick Live and LWE have announced that they will be putting on 12 shows over the autumn spanning the opening night on October 1st to December the 17th these shows will give London something to look forward to over the winter clubbing season of 2022 as organizers promise that the lineup and production will cement as London's ones London's best clubbing experience oh wow so they're really going for it the booms will be an outcome of tight cooperation between Broadwick Live Newham Council Road Docks and Project in order to make sure the club will have a positive influence on social economic area so for sure the sound would be pretty shit um unless it's far away from places so if they're having all this stuff about liaison with councils and stuff so i don't know it's, it feels like the sound might be terrible but it also might feel like it will be something similar to like a print works operation where they might have it set up in a way where they have maybe shuttle buses that ferry people from certain places there might be a heavy security presence to make sure people don't linger around um, there might be a specific route that they have to kind of enter and leave the club they'll do certain things to make sure that it sort of causes as less damage as possible to a local environment or neighborhood so people don't complain doesn't get shut down speaking about the upcoming opening of the beams aj uh, jaram the director of music at broadwalk live says we're excited to finally announce our inaugural music program at the beams in collaboration with lwe the partnership with two of london's foremost promoters and music creators feels truly significant as it is a reunion of the ambitious team who launched printworks oh yeah true so who's doing printworks now if they if they're not doing it anymore who's doing the program around printworks is it just broadwick live no it's not that who is that then? who is it doing i don't know huh so it's AWA and Broadwick are responsible for doing, responsible for launching Primus in this current iteration. So I wonder who's currently doing the program of it now. Huh. Musically, we will lean into the partnerships programming and an eclectic series of day and night events over 12 consecutive Saturdays. We will be featuring top tier names, see, emerging talent, mm, let's see, across various sound styles and genres with the broad sphere of house techno disco and everything that lies between. We look forward to introducing our audiences to this exceptional raw industrial setting full of character and situated in an untouched part of London. Please get people from East London to play there, guys. The venue will be housed near the public transport amenities and will be easily accessible by DLR via Ponton Dock Station. Bloody hell, man. I used to go to, this is like my ends. The full details of the deal will be announced on July 5th. As now, the Beams is now undergoing planning stage. Okay, so July 5th. So we should have um, information on it now if you go to the site. Let's see. Actually, they, don't have a, they have an Instagram account, right? Where is it? The Beams. Where is it? The... the Ba, ba, ba. Oh, I don't have it. Okay, let's see if they got it. They should have it available already, so we can check it out. Um, it's called the Beams, right? The Beams, London. There we go. Let's see if they got it up already. Should we have it up already? Yeah, there you go. Cool. Okay, no details as of yet. They said the fifth, but we don't really have any much information. Five days ago. Yeah, hey, there you go. Nothing really else has been produced for it, but it looks interesting. It looks like a cool space. Definitely will check it out, of course. Um, but yeah, I'll also like if they do, <clears throat> please end up having some people from the local area, such as myself, able to play there because that would be an excellent tie-in for everything that's going on over there, I think, personally. But all that happened, we don't really know. Let's wait and see in it. Let's wait and see.